Hey, what's shaking, everyone? So, guess what? I've got some great news. Colin Kaepernick is finally back in Madden video games. I can't believe it, and I can barely contain my excitement, because you know what? He hasn't been in a game since 2016, and that was about the last time I fucking cared about Madden, but that's not important. You know what is important? He's finally back in the game, just as he deserves to be, because, god damn it, it's not the fact that Madden 21 is quite possibly the shittiest game of all time. It has nothing to do with that. Does it have anything to do with the fact that maybe his Disney deal is not panning out with any sort of progress being made since July 6th? No. Maybe the fact that he's probably blown through all of his Nike deal money from 2018? Or the fact that that campaign went over like a lead balloon? No. I have great news because Colin Kaepernick is coming back to the NFL as well. Yes! Forget the fact that he wore pig socks that were dressed up like cops on the sidelines. Forget the fact that he was the first person to publicly protest the flag and set forth all of this woke culture into the professional sports and totally ruin the game. No. Roger Goodell wants him back in the league, and by God, he got a lot of attention, and I will tell you right now, we finally have an update. As of yesterday, no NFL teams called Kaepernick about a job. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. If you could still fucking ga play the game, you'd be in the fucking league. Dante Stallworth got drunk and killed a man. Michael Vick ran a dogfighting ring. Plaxico Burris had an illegal weapon and shot himself in the fucking leg. All three of these guys committed felonies and then got jobs in the NFL because they could play. You, my friend, cannot play anymore. I want to read this Breitbart story just for pure catharsis because it's... Mmm, one of my favorite things I've come across lately. The, fury, the flurry of reports for, from a few months ago about NFL teams having interest in signing the league's original anthem protester appears to have been one giant virtue signal. Oh, Breitbart. According to a source, according to a source to Pro Football Talk, no one has contacted Colin Kaepernick's agents about signing their client to an NFL contract. Per a source with knowledge of the situation, there was some fake interest expressed immediately after Floyd's death, seemingly out of guilt. Wow, just kind of... Oh, I want to do a story about this in the future, but I'll just uh, break ranks here. Support for Black Lives Matter is below what it was prior to the George Floyd incident. All of that goodwill, <laughs> gone out the window. Hmm. Get woke, go broke, you riot, you lose. At one point along the way, NFL media reported that teams had contacted friends and associates of Kaepernick, and they would be contacting his agent when they would get to the point where they're confident enough that they think he can work out a contract. So either they never got to the point of confidence, that they can work out a contract, or it was just more bullshit. Just like everything this man stands for. Now, if you're unaware of Colin Kaepernick's background, he is... He does have black heritage, obviously. But he's a mix of black and white, and he was raised by a white family in a suburban neighborhood. Prior to him getting benched in 2016, he never expressed any sort of social justice activism. But it wasn't until the fact that his play fell off the side of a cliff that all of a sudden, hmm, I get benched, hmm, maybe I'm going to try and get some spotlight for myself, maybe, oh, I don't know, get traded to a team where I can, you know, try and resurrect my dying career, but... Uh, that was 2016. It's 2020, folks, and we're fast creeping up on the start of the NFL season. And, as you can see here from the fine folks at Breitbark, no NFL teams called Kaepernick about a job. 
Now, I listed the examples of Dante Stallworth, Michael Vick, and Plaxico Burris as just a few of the felons, felons, convicted felons, who have gotten jobs after they've done their time and, you know, extended their careers afterwards. Michael Vick played, I think, another five years and just recently retired. Plaxico Burris came back and had a couple seasons, and I think Dante Stallworth won a championship with the Patriots after he got drunk and killed a guy. But all of that was mitigated by the fact that these three guys have talent. Colin Kaepernick stunk. He had two good years, and then it fell off a fucking cliff for him. Now, he originally came in after Alex Smith in 2012, and then took over for Alex Smith in 2013, and that's when they made a run all the way up to the Super Bowl. They were a tremendous team on both sides of the ball. I don't want you for, to forget this. At the time, the big conversation was between who would have a better career, Colin Kaepernick and Russell Wilson. I was on the wrong side of that. I really had high hopes for Colin Kaepernick. I thought he was going to be you know, kind of the second coming of Steve Young, perhaps. He had all the talent. The team around him was tremendous. And that defense led by Patrick Willis cannot be overstated how good it was. And the fact that um, Kaepernick also benefited from quite possibly one of the best assembled offensive lines at the time. But, hey, the numbers show they went 12-4 and four that year. He threw for nearly 3,200 yards. And the year after, even though they went 8-8 eight and eight in a division that was on the... Yeah, it was on the up and up at that point because he... San Francisco has to compete with the Rams, who at that time were just building everything together. I don't remember if they quite drafted Gurley and Goff yet, but their defense, yeah, their defense was definitely coming into form with Aaron Donald and a bunch of linebackers who I can't remember at the time, but they definitely had a stout defense and a developing offense. And Arizona's always going to be in a peripheral state of reaching even though I really would give a significant look as a dark horse pick for a decent run in the playoffs this year and who's the other team in the in the NFC West so you got yeah the Niners the Rams and Niners Rams I'm rambling I'll be right back I'm retarded the aforementioned Seahawks as well so, yeah, and that's when I think I think 14 was the year that, yeah, Seattle really went over on the 49ers come up. And I think they won the Super Bowl that year. It was either that year or the year after. And they went back to back. And at that point, well, as you can see, 8-8. Eight and eight. Colin Kaepernick, yeah, the 14 season was not bad for him, even though what I think they won a wild card berth. They didn't do fuck all. Like, that was his banner year, stats-wise. Like, through, what, 3,300 yards, 20-ish touchdowns. And then, right after that, uh, everything started to fall apart. I think Patrick Willis retired in 15, and that defense was just nothing. And, you know, 1,600 yards isn't going to fucking take you very far. Or six throwing touchdowns. And for the most part, and even in the 16 when everything just fucking tanked right out. So he had, all in all, two and a half years of significant decline in play. Now, you don't get that kind of leeway in the NFL. Look at Marcus Mariota. The guy is fairly talented. And he was jettisoned out for Ryan Tannehill, like, at the drop of a hat. I forget where he's backing up now, but that's a spot that if Kaepernick's pride would have just uh, let him take a pay cut and go somewhere else, he might still be playing in the league. But at the same time, he wouldn't have those sweet Disney and Nike contracts as well. Hey, and just another episode of Get Woke, Go Broke. Hey. You know, I hear unemployment's down to, uh, what, under 9%? Yeah. I guess we know one guy who's always going to be on the take. Anyways, guys, that was just a quick one for you. I just wanted to 
gloat in the fact that uh, this piece of shit is not going to be clogging up our screens if I so choose to watch the NFL this year. Anyways, guys, if you've appreciated this uh, quick little video, as well as the analysis on my different videos, I put a fair amount of work into this stuff, and I really hope you appreciate it as much as I enjoy recording it. If you could drop, you'll, drop a like or a subscribe if you like what I'm doing here, that'd be greatly appreciated. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you guys to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.